Good evening everybody. This is Dr. Nandi. Today we are going to talk about hypothesis test for population proportion. Uh, before I get started, I would like to mention that in my channel at You Can Do Math, I have solved all kinds of statistics problems just for you. So please subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button because you will get free access to all kinds of math and stats problems solved for you. So I want to find the population proportion of students uh, at a college who have laptop computers. Okay, that is my goal. But I cannot reach the entire population at any one time. So instead of uh, reaching out to all the students, I select a simple random sample of 100 students and find that 65 of them have laptop computers. So my sample proportion of students who have laptop computers, which is given by P hat, is 65 out of 100 or 0.65. Next, I make an educated guess, hypothesize, that the population proportion P of students who have laptop computers, P is equal to 0.5. So my null hypothesis or my status quo is 8 sub 0 colon P equal to 0.5. This is my hypothesized value, P sub 0. And my alternate hypothesis, 8 sub A, is P greater than 0.5. Now we need to find out how far the sample mean p hat is located away from the hypothesized value of 0.5. But we have to standardize this difference of p hat minus p0. Standardize means divide by the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat to get a z-score, which we call test statistic. This test statistic is a characteristic of the sample that we have collected. So standard deviation of the sampling distribution is also called standard error, assuming H0 is true, is given by this formula. Standard error is square root of P sub 0 multiplied by under in parenthesis 1 minus P0 divided by N. So in our case it is square root inside the square root 0.5 for P0 times 1 minus 0.5 divided by 100 and it works out to 0 0.05. So my test statistic is the difference of sample proportion p hat from the hypothesized population proportion p0. So p hat minus p0 divided by the standard error. So it's 0 0.65 minus 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.05, which is 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.05 is 3. Uh, that means the sample proportion of 0 0.65 is located three times the standard error above the hypothesized population uh, proportion of 0 0.5. Okay. And now we need to find out what is the probability of getting a z value as extreme as 3 or more extreme than 3, assuming H0 is true. That is, what is the probability of z greater than 3? So I've drawn a standard normal curve at the center where z is equal to 0. Okay, the, where the relative frequency is the highest, z is 0. This is the mean of the standard normal curve. Its mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. And we want to find out the area to the right of z equal to 3 under the standard normal curve which is shaded. Now this area on the right stretches to a very large number on the right hand side which we indicate by E99. E stands for exponent or 1 followed by 99 zeros. Okay, So we can use the TI calculator, TI84 calculator. We press the second key and then the first key and then we scroll down to normal CDF, which is number 2. When we do that, we get this screen. The lower value means the area where the probability of the area or probability of z greater than 3, we want to find the area starting from z equal to 3 and on the right of z equal to 3 stretching to a very large number. So my lower boundary is 3 of this area, shaded area. My upper boundary is a very large number on the right hand side which we indicate by E99, that means 1 followed by 99 zeros. How do I get the E in the calculator? Press the second button and then comma which is on top of letter seven, number 7 and then type 99, E99. Mu is 0 because it's standard normal curve. Sigma is 1. Then I scroll down to PEST and then hit enter and enter. And I will get the probability value of z greater than 3 as 0 0.001. Now we can assume alpha. This is the level of significance. 
what is level of significance it's maximum probability of making a type 1 error what is type 1 error when we reject h0 even though h0 is re in reality true that is we make a wrong decision of rejecting h0 even though it is true that is the maximum risk we are taking of this area or alpha as 0 0.05 now our calculated p value a probability of z greater than 3 is less than the alpha 0 0.05 so our decision is at alpha equal to 0 0.05 there is an we reject h0 because p is less than alpha conclusion at alpha equal to 0 0.05 we have enough evidence to support the alternate that p is greater than 0.5 or more than 50 percent of the students have laptop computers i will stop here today if you have any question you can Write me a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And please subscribe to my channel because I've solved all kinds of problems in statistics, in other areas of maths just for you. So I will see you next time with another interesting problem. Okay. Take care. Have a nice day. See you.